Hi, it's uh, iBook Bindings podcast, and today we have uh, Andreas Marulis as our guest. Uh, he recently won an award from uh, Design of Book Binders for his uh, uh, set book uh, uh, of Mice and Men uh, by John Steinbeck. Uh, and uh, the prize was uh, Elizabeth Greenhill Prize for Gold Tooling, which is, uh, uh, I guess, quite impressive because uh, gold tooling is, is a pretty hard skill to master and uh, you know to, to keep. Hi, hi Andreas. Hi, hi. thanks for, for having me and uh, yes yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be on this bookie talk. I've, I've watched a lot of your episodes and it's nice to be you know in one of them as a, an interview. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I guess we will have a lot to talk about today. My co-host uh, uh, is Pavel. He joins us from Moscow as usual. I'm Stepan. Hi, Pavel. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. So let's just uh, dive in, I guess. Uh, uh, gold tooling. So what's what's how how, how, <laughs> how you found your interest in this, uh, you know? <laughs> Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't claim. I wouldn't say anything uh, like you know. I wouldn't claim to be uh, a gold finisher or anything. Uh, I guess you know. I guess I was a bit lucky with that. But um, yeah, gold doing is something that I I do. I try to you know have learned. I have been taught how to do it. But I wouldn't say that I am a gold finisher or anything. I have like so small experience in that. Um, but it's one of the competitions that. Um, as I understand, it, it gives an opportunity to a lot of amateurs and apprentices, you know, people who are starting their career in bookbinding to, you know, to be part of this challenge and do something. And there are a lot of prizes, so that's nice. I mean, most of the people win something and that's, you know, it's a nice feeling. You have a small reward about your, uh, about your work. And um, so, yeah, uh, the, the gold tooling part of this book, I, I'm happy to, to show you the book, actually. I have it here. Uh, yeah, that would be yeah. great. <laughs> it, it, it's not sold yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, um, there was a bit of gold tooling, but not that much as uh, generally, you know, you see in traditional uh, book binding, uh, like the French bindings and these kind of things. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I guess that's something that we discussed quite a lot on our podcast, that uh, there is this perception of uh, richly uh, tooled uh, book with a lot of uh, gold stamped on, on its cover. And uh, when you see something like uh, your book, uh, well, it, it, it attracts my attention much better than, than, than a traditional, <laughs> traditionally tooled book. So uh, I guess uh, that's, that may be one of the reasons uh, it, it got the price. Thanks, that, uh, that's very kind. Uh, yeah, I mean, these, these competitions, I'm, I'm quite new to the whole thing with the design bindings, but uh, it's only my second design binding. So uh, I don't really know how it works yet, uh, but it's, it's always a great thing to, you know, read a book and then try to visualize that. And uh, I guess because I, I'm coming from, from an art background, uh, it's, it's something that uh, not, not, you know, I wouldn't say that it comes naturally to me, but it's something I feel kind of familiar with it as a process. Um, it's almost like an illustration, I would say, like uh, trying to, you know, uh, read something, a text and make an image out of that. And uh, of course, with books, as you know, it's, it's kind of limited uh, in a way how, how many, you know, how big is the surface that you can do things. You have specific things that you can play. You have like the covers, of course, you have the end papers inside, you have the edges if you want to, and then the end buttons. And that's that's about it. I don't think you have any, oh, the box and the box also. Uh, so you have to play with these kind of things and, you know, manipulate them in a way to try to give probably a hint. I, I, I don't know, my, my approach so far is to, I'm trying to make the cover and the whole binding in a way that it will attract the, the viewer and they will be interested to read the book. It's like a, an intro to, to the book. Did you have uh, any chance to talk with uh, uh, other members of, uh, uh, I, I guess, fellows of designer book binders or uh, anybody else about your binding? Because I understand that uh, during the previous years, one of the important parts of the award ceremony was this chance to communicate and to hear some recommendations and advice uh, concerning your binding. Was, it, was there any opportunity like that this year digitally, I guess? <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess we missed out a bit on, on that this year because it happened all remotely. Um, uh, 
uh, I hope in the future, yeah, there will be a chance to, you know, speak in, in person with some, some of the judges. Uh, the good thing about um, uh, the prize I won is that with the, the check that they give you, they, they offered uh, a free course with uh, Florent Zin, who's, who's a great bookbinder. And uh, she was, um, she, she's, I don't know if you, probably you know Bernard Middleton, she, she was his student. And uh, so it's like, you know, she's, she's one of the, the, the biggest names in, uh, in book banking in the UK. And yeah, that's, uh, there's um, a session with hair. So I'm looking forward to that, um, to learn more about gold tooling with hair. Um, and then, yeah, the, the feedback you get, oh, I don't know how it worked the, the previous years, really. Uh, but yeah, it's more about, you know, short feedback that they give you the ceremony. Uh, I don't know, but maybe the previous years, there was some kind of live uh, feedback and, they, you know, you could discuss specifically your book with someone uh, from, the, from the fellows of DB. Could you perhaps show us the book and talk uh, us through the process, how you got from the text to the object? Sure, yeah, I mean, have it here. Um, so here it's in, uh, in the box. You might have seen it in, in pictures I posted on uh, Instagram. Uh, it's a simple box, just a drawback box. And uh, I'll try to, to do a nice opening to you. <laughs> um, so yes, I'll try to. Yeah, uh, here's how you see it in the box. And I'll take it out of the box to show you. So this is the binding. And it's a very simple design generally, but I don't know if you can, uh, if you can tell from the pictures a lot, but I think it's, it's better to see, you know, always in a video binding to, to get the idea of, how it looks. Um, I'll, I'll explain the, the details. So it, it's graphite, but with some, some pattern there or? or... Yeah, yeah, there is, um, I was inspired by this kind of, you know, uh, agricultural uh, fields and the hay and all, all of these uh, kind of um, shapes. And uh, I use that, uh, I've used actually goose, uh, a couple of gooses to make this kind of uh, pattern on the, the edges um, to match the, um, uh, this kind of agricultural feeling from the book. And so, uh, I'm sorry, so you engraved, uh, engraved the pattern? Yeah, but what, uh, what it is, it's uh, you, you do the, the decoration with the graphite. After you, you have polished very well the, the edges of the book, uh, you apply the graphite, you wax it, with beeswax, and then uh, as as it is still in the press, you you use whatever you you like. I think it's called uh, in French they call it gaufres, and uh, I, uh, I guess in English it's gaufring. Um, and um, yeah, you can you know gently push. It's quite soft because it's paper. You can push with the tool inside and create these kind of patterns. Uh, if you overdo it, you might start seeing white uh, because of, you know the paper sewing. Uh, so it has to be kind of gentle uh, pushing. And I have uh, tried to match this, this kind of um, edge decoration with the end paper. So you can see there is uh, gold tooling around the edges of the book, uh, which um, I like in a way uh, because you can see when it's closed as well, uh, it's reflecting a bit the gold. I don't know if it can, it can be very well seen now, um, but when you see it like it has like a kind of mirror effect uh and it's reflecting this kind of thing well it's it's really smart idea because it's sort of hidden but then it sort of shows uh uh in all these all, all these different viewing angles and uh, uh so you can see it and then when you open the the book uh, you can really see it in, in all you know uh glory I have to. I have to say, it looks so much more interesting than uh, in the single photograph that was on their website. I mean, it is quite a journey. It's very impressive. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, that's really yeah the general view of the binding. And uh, I don't know if you, if you want me to explain more in detail uh, a few technical things or uh, about the idea of the design. Yeah, sure. I, I uh, guess both. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, 
you know, if, if, if I talk to bookbinders, I'm happy to talk about technical things. But if, if it's a bit boring, I can just speak about the, the idea. Well, I, our audience is very diverse. So I'm sure there, are, that there will be some bookbinders watching these videos and there will be some uh, non-professionals uh, for, for, for whom, I guess, uh, yeah. uh, your, your, your creative process would be more interesting. So, yeah, both. So yeah, the, generally as, as a binding is a, what we call a full leather binding um, a, and uh, it's sewn on four linen tapes and it has uh, uh, suede um, fly leaves. This is, uh, this is suede, all the, the fly leaf. And um, my initial plan was to have also suede on this side, but then I changed my mind. I'll, I'll explain, explain later why. Uh, and I made some paste paste papers. Uh, so so you you made the paste paper as well. Yeah, I like. I, I mean, when it's a design binding, I like to to control as many things as possible in the book. So I prefer to do you know my own uh, kind of designs. Um, and then on the cover, uh, from the technical aspect of it, uh, there is gold tooling uh, with gold leaf. There is blind lines and there is onlays. And then that's, uh, that's my little trick. I used some of the suede I had from, for the fly leaves and I made an, um, uh, an onlay with suede. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but <laughs> it's an experiment. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, it's looking okay, but yeah, then we'll see. Um, and then, well, yeah. At, at, least, at least this book has a box, so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, without the box, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't have a very uh, good future. Um, and then, yeah, it has double core end bands, uh, hand sewn again. Uh, and what else? And the, that's the question that we discussed already. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't done anything else in the, in, the, in the book as such because it's nicely illustrated. It's a it's a poly, poly society book. Uh, it's the set book that we all got uh, from uh, the organizers of the competition, and it's illustrated. Um, uh, let me check the name because I don't want to make that wrong. Uh, to say that wrong, um, I think it's John James. Sorry, James Elb Elb Elbon. I'm not very sure if I pronounced it correctly, but uh, he has done really nice uh, illustrations, woodcuts, and uh, some of them they are color ones. Uh, which is always a challenge for the book binder. If there is some kind of illustrations inside, it's, you know, sometimes it can be a bit restrictive and you have to match it somehow. Um, so this, this one was, I think it was a good, um, good choice. Um, and you, you can easily go with it. Um, uh, but sometimes it's more, you know, colorful and uh, then, you know, it, has, it starts to have a lot of colors as a binding. So uh, yeah, that's that's about the technical uh, aspect of it, uh, and the box. Uh, it's uh, just a canvas drawback box with uh, linen linen pads. They're quite soft. Uh, it's, it's filled with cotton underneath, um, so it's nice and secure in there. You know, there's no risk of damaging that. Um, so yeah, more on on the idea. Uh, I don't know if I should say something about the story. I don't know how how familiar is everyone with with the story. Um, but... Well, I, I guess uh, if you will give a general outline and uh, how it influenced your uh, creative process, that would be enough. Yeah, uh, if I mean, some, if somebody somebody haven't read the story uh, and they would be interested, they can go and read it. So. They can buy this book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a classic. I, I, it wasn't a classic for me. I didn't know this book. I mean, I knew the name, but I hadn't read it as a kid, uh, although it's a classic. And uh, yeah, I read it for this occasion. Uh, but it's a very small book, easy to, to read it. It looks, it looks uh, that this edition is quite thick because it has illustrations. It's, it's a nice um, edition, but normally the paperbacks are quite small and easy to read them. Um, so yeah, the, the, the basic, uh, the two characters of the book, it's uh, George and Lenny. Uh, and um, it's, it's set somewhere, I would say, early, early 20th century in, uh, in America, in, uh, I think somewhere in California. 
And uh, yeah, these two guys are uh, drifters. They're, they're moving from place to place to, to walk in different ranches and different farms. Um, it's uh, so yeah. The, the two these these two characters uh, we see in the book. Uh, George is the let's say the smart guy who has planned everything. Uh, he knows what he wants to do with his future. And Lenny, it's almost like a, like a kid still, and he he's sometimes a bit naive. Uh, and the basic characteristic of his is that he can't really. Uh, control his emotions and, um, and because he's such a large guy he can't control also his physical uh, power uh, his hands are so strong and you know if he wants he can just you know um, uh, smash something uh, with his uh, powerful hands uh, so but he's as, as a character he's like he's so kind and he's so gentle uh, it's almost like a contradiction um, so he has this kind of love for uh, fairy animals uh, like mice and rabbits uh, you, you will see I guess you saw in the competition there were a lot of mi uh, mice and rabbits in the designs uh, of that. Um, so he, he liked this kind of texture the, the soft fur of these animals uh, and sometimes you know out from out of his love for, for these animals uh, he kills them in his hands without realizing he just pets them so much that he, he kills the young, um, innocent uh, uh, puppies or uh, whatever it is. Um, and that, that's, I guess that's, um, uh, it's like that it's preparing us for the, the, the future, the, the ending of the book that I, I don't want to reveal for someone who hasn't read the book. Um, so yeah, based on this kind, these two characters, and especially on, on Lenny's character, who's the, let's say, more uh, dramatic uh, character in the book, um I use this kind of idea of the the fairy fairy um, texture and soft and I wanted to give that to the um, uh, to, to the viewer of the, the book, the reader of the book who, whoever gets uh, the book in his hands uh, I wanted them to to feel this kind of thing. So that's why I put the, the suede uh, on lay to feel this kind of texture. And it's the, the, the spot that a lot of people open the book. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it brings an additional uh, dimension to the, yeah. you know, to the design and to the uh, comprehension of the book, I guess. Hopefully. I mean, uh, yeah, that, that was the idea. And then you, you have also the, the suede inside that you can you know, feel it's very soft and it's very nice to the hands. Um, so I started with a very pictorial, uh, I would say, design, and then I had to start simplifying all that. Um, and yeah, I started thinking about all these kind of uh, country houses and huts. And uh, anyway, I, I simplified all that in the process. I can show you some of the early designs if you want to. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so the, the final design was just this kind of uh, chain reaction that we see in the book. Um, uh, so, you know, when, when a drop of water uh, drips and it creates this kind of ripples uh, on the surface, so something, you know, something small then creates a lot of, um, it creates a kind of chain reaction. And uh, this is what I tried to, to do also my, with my simple design here. Like I created this, I put this in the center. It's like the, the quarter of the circle. Um, I put that in the center, uh, which is his love, Lenny's love for, for the fairy animals. And this is creating a sequence of events. Um, and you can see also the, the red lines, which are the blood lines. Uh, we have some kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know if I should say, but there's a kind of matter in the, in the, uh, the novel. Uh, so that represents you know the blood and there was there was a i can't remember exactly now the sequence but there was something for each one specifically um that i had in my mind when i was doing it uh, each line represented something different um and then yeah that's that's one thing uh, this kind of uh, chain event and then the other thing that i wanted to show uh, apart from the environment that i explained with the hay and this kind of um uh, thing it's when you open the whole book 
which is something, I guess, the book partners often think how the whole design looks uh, together. Um, I, I created these two lines uh, and one of them uh, is representing the, the landfill, the yellow land, uh, and the other one is the kind of uh, the life. Um, sorry, I just need to, to check my notes if I say that correctly. Uh, yeah, the, sorry, the other, the other one is for the body flares. Um, uh, and as, as you can see here on the, in the picture, the, it has this kind of a flesh color, it's quite close to my hand, uh, a bit orange maybe. And this is the land, the, the yellow. So in, on the back of the book, uh, you can see that the flesh crosses, uh, the flesh crosses the, 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 um, the line of the, the land. And, and that's because at some point, you know, we die and uh, the body eventually will end up in the land. And, and that's how I, I thought I could represent the death uh, in the book and this kind of drama that we have. And, and for the dreams that the, these two guys make, uh, I thought I could represent them with a kind of stardust, these kind of dots I have put here. Um, it's the dreams that they have for the future. They're going to, to make some savings, buy a land, buy, buy a small house, have their own animals there. They think about all of these things during the book, but because of this event and of the death, uh, as stardust, this kind of dream disappears. Um, and that's it. Uh, that's, that's the story for me. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry if it was uh, a bit long description. <laughs> it was mesmer mesmerizing. Uh, could you uh, talk a bit about what uh, uh, gold uh, represents in this design. And uh, uh, since we're talking about it uh, in your other uh, design, you mentioned that you only designed uh, two designer book bindings. Both of them got prizes, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one also uses uh, gold in a rather discreet way, and, and it also uh, represents not so much, I don't know, wealth or color or opulence, it represents light. Am I right in, inter in interpreting your works? Yeah, that, that's, that's right. I mean, you have to think about it in a way. It, it's nice to use gold and you can do all sorts of things with gold, but um, you have to think also the, the context of the book, if, if that applies well in the story or not. This one, for instance, if I could avoid completely the gold, I, I would, but uh, I wanted to have some, I wanted to have some simple decoration. And especially, um, as you saw, I put it inside. So it, it's more like a representation of the beauty we have inside. These guys were very poor. They had nothing in this world. So I didn't want to have a lot of gold, which represents wealth and has a lot of, um, you know, different meanings. Um, that's why all, all this simplicity uh, regarding the gold tooling. Um, but yeah, go, I, I don't know. Um, a lot of things can, could be said about gold tooling. Um, the thing is, um, we, with the other design I had done in the past, I used also foil a lot um, to, to create these kind of patterns. Uh, every time, I, I mean, every time it's different. Um, it, gold is a nice material that I like to work with. Um, and unfortunately, not a lot of people use it anymore in competitions. So I guess that gives you also a good advantage. <laughs> in a way uh, so it, it's a tip for for the future contestants <laughs> yeah but, uh but i think it's also nice and i'm still working on that uh, it's uh, it's also a nice way uh to you know think out of the box like the, the gold as such has been used in book mining for centuries and centuries and it's nice for us as a newer generation of bookbinders to think again about it and find a new way of using it I haven't managed that yet, but I'm trying to, you know, slowly to find new ways of using it. I have some ideas for my next bindings, but uh, yeah, we'll see if they will work out. Okay, it would be interesting to see when when they are, you know, done <laughs> and you're ready to show them. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really interesting uh, matter of uh, using gold and gold tooling in bookbinding because as, as i as i as i said before uh, uh 
some bookbinders prefer to follow the traditional patterns and designs of uh, 18th uh, of the 18th and 19th century or something like that and uh, uh, while uh, the craft is really uh, need, need, needs a really skilled person to you know to it, it, it needs a skilled person to do this uh, uh, I find it a bit boring <laughs> Because it's something yeah, that time was time. repeated time and time again, uh, yeah. and and even if I can marvel uh, the uh, the masterful uh, use of uh, tools and uh, uh, creation of patterns, I'm very interested to see something like your work <laughs> where there is some experimentation and some new use of uh, uh, these materials. So, uh, thanks again <laughs> for your work. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's very kind of you to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's um, uh, it's always interesting to see the the history of a, of a trade uh, like bookbinding and see what what has been done in the past and be inspired by that. But it's always it's always I think a good idea to try to bring that to your era and try to you know change the things a bit. And um, I don't know. I was I was discussing recently with uh, with Matt. Uh, probably you know Matt Matt Stockel. Uh, he was also uh, we we we've been uh, we we trained together as bookbinders and we still work together. Um, I, I was telling him uh, recently about a book um, that I read years ago uh, by a Japanese author, uh, and uh, it's written in the 1930s. And uh, I think his name's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tani Tanizaki, and um, the book is called In Praise of Sado. Uh, and, and he described this kind of um, um, era where electric electricity was just introduced to the, the Japanese culture. Um, and he's, he's not a fan of it. He doesn't like the fact that a lot of cables are um, now part of the architecture. You can see the, the devices, the appliances, all these kind of things, the lamps. And he doesn't like also the, the light that electricity produces uh, and bright, you know, brights and everything uh, in, in the house. Um, and he speaks about the, the gilding, uh, if I remember correctly, because it's been years. Um, he speaks about the gilding on the objects and the polis and something that is very shiny for a purpose in the, in the house. The decoration of the things was so shiny and sometimes gilded with gold because it was so dark in the house that they wanted to reflect any kind of gold in there. Hey, I'm sorry, any, any kind of um, light with the gold. Um, and then when electricity comes and we have light everywhere, um, that starts to be a bit strange. And yeah, we it, haven't it, thought it, about it flat, that. It flattens and equalizes everything. Yeah, and, and uh, Matt, uh, Matt um, uh, commented nicely on that. And he said that, um, you know, probably the books were made for, for this purpose with a lot of gold on the spines because the libraries were quite dark. It's not that you know they want something to reflect the light so much, but it's also you know if you have a blind tool, like you can't see in the dark what what is on the title. If you have gold, apart from the wealth part of you know uh, it, it proves something for the owner, but it's also this kind of um, you know thing that the Japanese author speaks uh, about in his book. That you see in the dark more; it reflects any kind of light coming from the window. So I think there was a purpose for that in the previous centuries. That probably we have. You know there is there isn't anymore so we need to probably rethink about why to use gold you you spoke earlier about uh, your thoughts on uh, how how to use gold in this book and especially as uh, the main characters are not uh, rich at all and they are very poor and they have no money and this reminded me of our recent uh, uh, talk uh, with uh, kate holland about uh, uh, the book uh, she worked on for the Booker Prize, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um, it it also was uh, was was a book about uh, people who are not rich at all and uh, uh, quite poor as well. But still, uh, uh, she and uh, uh, Derek Hood, uh, who started uh, uh, this uh, working on this binding, they decided to use some gold tooling to you know to um, to show some hopes for the future or or. Uh, uh, people trying to you know to to feel like they they have something some 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 uh, money some uh, possessions something like that and uh, that's interesting how it can uh, 
how gold can reflect these things and how it work, can work for, for this story. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So wasn't it Dimitris who talked uh, about his book uh, uh, about South uh, Sea Project, which was connected to slavery? Yeah, and, this as well. And, uh, and in his book, uh, gold <laughs> represented chains of those slaves and also told a very, very particular story. There yeah, is something here that. Yeah. It's interesting that many people are clearly thinking uh, about about that, about what gold can rep represent in a mo in a modern bookbinding. I think uh, uh, in uh, art historic terms, we can think about uh, the early 20th century and the Viennese movement. Uh, Klimt being the most famous of uh, of its representatives, but they also struggled to use gold to show something other than richness. Mm. And they they often used it to represent uh, li uh, light or catharsis or, uh, 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 or uh, the space around you disappearing. And I think uh, it, it can still be done and in bookbinding too, because Viennese bookbinding of, the, of, uh, of that time also uses lots of gold and it's never boring you never looked at it and count uh, the bands you know <laughs> there's something going on so so there is clearly lots of potential yeah i mean um uh, it's interesting to see how some things in in our world have um, became rare and expensive like gold it's it's only a matter of rarity like how 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 much you can find of that uh, on this planet, how many diamonds are there, or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, I don't know, uh, but apart from that, uh, which, you know, that increases the value of it, there is also a practical aspect because um, bookbinders in the past have also used silver or uh, other, other materials to, to do tooling, and that oxidizes in, in the future. Gold is quite a stable material. It stays as it is. Uh, okay, it, it can be a bit darker in the future, but it's it's a stable material and uh, i think that's you know from the practical aspect it's a very you know uh, very useful thing uh, to have and and what about gra uh, graphite i never thought about how durable that is actually yeah i don't know either <laughs> well it 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 doesn't uh, increase the durability of uh, book edges in any way yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it is quite easily marked. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah. a book with a graphite edge could should, should be handled quite carefully. Indeed, I mean, um, originally the the books, as you know, they, they would be gilded uh, on the edges, which um, I, it, it wouldn't suit to this book for any reason. Um, uh, but the practical aspect of that, again, it's that it protects the book. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it can be marked easily, uh, not easy, not as easy as, as graphite, but uh, still, uh, you see a lot of scratches. But in a way, if the book stays, because it's so polished, uh, so well polished, um, if it stays firm uh, on, on the shelf, um, it's well protected from any kind of bugs, insects, and you know, silver fish. They they can't penetrate that. It's such it's a metal thing for them. They they can you know their teeth are so small to make a hole on, on the gold leaf. Uh, so you see books in libraries that they're gilded, and uh, if there is no like wavy wavy pages, uh, the books are you know almost intact. Um, on other occasions, especially on the head side, that's very helpful for the dust because if you don't have gilded edges on the head, and the book is like three, four hundred years old, all the dust has been gathered on on the head side, and you know that that doesn't go off uh, really. That it doesn't come off easily. Um, on you know nowadays we do other thing other things for uh, its decoration, which it doesn't serve anymore so much this kind of purpose to protect the text block. Uh, graphite is one of those. Um, although graphite has been, I think the German bookbinders used it a lot as a preparation layer before the, um, the gilding. I'm not very sure about that. Um, but some cultures they used, um, I think it's called red ball. Uh, like in, in England, they used a lot of that before uh, they do that gilding. And some other cultures they use, I think, graphite, which gives a cooler uh, shade to gold uh, in comparison to the red, which gives a warmer shade. Um, 
then yeah, you can do also acrylics, you can do you know gouache, all, all sorts of things. But um, the graphite has the nice thing of the, um, the reflection and this kind of mirror effect. And uh, I wanted to reflect. Uh, there, there was also this kind of color. Um, I had limited. I had limited my colors to gray, gold, yellowish. Um, so I wanted to work with these colors. But um, apart from that, it had this kind of mirror effect that reflected nicely the turnings, the the tooling on the turnings. So yeah, it served this kind of all the, all of this purpose together as a, a decoration. You mentioned mentioned polishing the edges, but I, I should add for for uh, for viewers who are not uh, uh, who do not know the procedure of uh, uh, decorating book edges, uh, you you have to sand the uh, book edges uh, so that they are really 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 flat and, and almost perfect. And yeah. uh, because otherwise, when you start uh, putting uh, gold or graphite or anything else on, on the surface uh, all, all the scratches will show up and you cannot uh, cannot polish uh, polish them away after you put the material so it's really a long and tedious process and yeah. it should be well it should be perfect <laughs> and then and then when you put graphite on the wall you have to uh, polish it once again <laughs> so it's another another tedious step <laughs> yeah it's it's a very messy process uh and because i did it all here uh, which is you know my binder is in my in my flat so it's a very messy process and i wouldn't do it easily again um it's 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 nice for something like design bindings but you know you clean the graphite for ages after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly yeah i really like the interplay of graphite and gold could you actually combine them on the edge could you uh use them both i i you mean you mean to to see them at the same time Somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like uh, I don't know, uh, so that part of the design was in gold, say something like a yeah. gold, uh, uh, gold plant all over a, a graphite body. I guess, I guess you could, but I haven't tried, so I don't know. Uh, someone more experienced could say, um, but I think you could use like the leaf of gold. Uh, and maybe apply some kind of glare that we use for the gold tooling on the graphite. Uh, I don't know if, it's, if it works. I can try it on the next binding and <laughs> let you know. Uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe yes. I, the thing is, sometimes uh, you have to think uh, the fact that this is still the pages of the book, that they are going to be opened. It's not like the cover of the book that you can do it almost anything you like and it will be that. Uh, on the pages that happened with my graphite edits as well. There's cracking because you know the, you find the pages. Some some of the decoration will go away as you open the book. So you have to be a bit careful about that because if you put the, the you know you might start the, the the leaf might start disappearing after a while if it's you know very not very well secured there. Uh, you you told us earlier that uh, there are some sketches uh, uh, you you have. Maybe you can show us uh, the, the sketches. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, this. As I said, um, uh, for this binding, I don't have a lot of um, you know uh, sketches and things like that because I had um, had uh, limited time to work on it, but. Um, yeah, but one of the things that I can show you, if you're interested, it's, you know, I, you start with a design. Um, as, as I read the book, I like to take notes in that. I don't read I don't read the book that I'm going to buy and I have another copy. It's normally a very cheap paperback that I take all my notes on and this. And also I, it, that stays to me because otherwise the other one might be sold. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the first ideas was to have something more pictorial. So my first my first paste papers that I did for that were something like that, um, which is, it's worked in the same way. Um, I mean, the same materials uh, as the other one, but I tried to represent roughly a hut there and a farm field. And uh, I sprinkled a bit of gold because that was the dream that they, you know, they were dreaming of. And then the, the back one, that I don't know if it's here, uh, didn't have a hat on it. It was just empty and with no gold. It was the reality that they had nothing. Anyway, I, I, I stepped away from this idea in the, in the process. Um, and then I started working on this kind of um, 
ripple effect that I told you. So I started making uh, things like that. Again, paste papers, uh, the same colors, uh, brownie, black, then again with gold. And, uh, but I, again, I wasn't very happy with this idea. And then I transferred this idea on the cover. Um, on the, um, the first, very, very first, uh, I don't know if I should show this because they're a bit terrible, but the very, very first ideas were something like that on the cover. And uh, it was terrible. I mean, I didn't like it. Uh, anyway, I, there, there were a lot of sketches like that, like, you know, what can I do? How can I do it? Simplify it. And then uh, just by working on it, sometimes I have like small, small bits of paper in my pockets. And when an idea comes, I just, you know, sketch it quickly. And for some reason I did that. Uh, I don't know if you can see it well. Uh, and I liked it somewhere there on the corner and I kept it. Uh, that's, um, I was gluing out something. It's full of glue, this, this piece of paper. And I just quickly sketched something to remember, you know, this idea and I kept it. And then I, you know, I, the, the idea moves on as you, as you work on it, um, you do other things. Like you sew the book, you, you, you prepare other things. And um, the idea works in the background somehow. Um, so yeah, I ended up with the design that I saw you, which has on the corner the, the, the ripple effect. And uh, in the beginning, it wasn't a circle, it was something else, um, but I didn't like it so much. That's my, my board I made just to try things. Um, so it has a different shape here still. And I was trying the letters, I was trying the lines, the stardust, the glare, how it's going to work. Um, and then I tried the, the turnings, if they look okay. Um, I also, you know, experiment with my materials, if they, you know, the onlays might peel back, peel off a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? The, the end pants, I tried some colors to see how they match my idea. So I made this kind of thing uh, just to see the, the color combination. And um, yeah, um, so, and then I, you know, I have a lot of materials here and I just put them all together to see how they look. So I picked the leather that I wanted to use. I picked the canvas for um, the, the box. Uh, I have some linen somewhere here and yeah, all these things have to, you know, to, to work organically. And sometimes things don't go well. So I made a label for the box. I didn't like it. I made it again. Uh, <laughs> normally I make a lot of things when I do a design binding, I do a lot of, sometimes I do like, a, I would say, I don't know. I would do anyway two labels just in case something goes wrong. If you prepare one, just do a, you know, a second one at the same time, it, it's more uh, time efficient. Um, for small things, not for everything. Um, so I liked also this kind of canvas and linen combination because again, it reminded me a lot of the, the context of the book, you know, the, the, the rucksacks that they might have on the shoulder as they, or all the materials that you find in the, in the ranch. A lot of things were, you know, with canvas and rough materials, linen, uh, natural materials generally. Uh, I didn't want to cover the box with a uh, background, which is like a plasticky cloth, very, very new also as a, as a material. And so, yeah, I, I ended up uh, with uh, the design you, you saw. <laughs> I don't know if, if that's helpful at all. Well, no, so it's, it's, it's very helpful because uh, uh, it's, I think it's important to show that uh, the creative process can involve anything and uh, uh, sometimes smallest things and smallest uh, unimportant sketches can uh, lead to creating the design you want to to make. And uh, so, thank you. Yeah. And you have to be pragmatic. I mean, you know, if you have, uh, I don't know, five years to work on the idea, you might come up with a better design. But uh, if you have, uh, I don't know, two, three weeks, <laughs> then you have to rush a bit. Uh, with the white yeah. noise, uh, if you have seen this binding I did, uh, for the other competition in Scotland, uh, I had much more. I had a lot of time to, to be prepared for that, and I had done a lot of designs, a lot of preparation boards. I tried a lot the technique with the foil I wanted to do, so there was more experimentation there. This one was a quicker uh, binding than the other one. 
I also like how you clearly go with the flow. If something doesn't work, well, you just turn right, yeah. then again, then again, so, until you finally arrive at a place where you say, this is good enough. How, yeah. um, how, do, how do you decide when to stop? I know with, uh, when, when you're doing something, there's always this idea, I can improve it just a little bit. And you do, and you do, and you do, and then you ruin it. I mean, yeah. how do you... <laughs> I'll, show you, I'll show you how I stop. I have this thing printed with uh, big letters saying deadline, 5th of February. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this on my notice board there. I have always my, you know, notes what I have to do. And, uh, you know, the deadline is very real. You have to finish the book by then. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think that's time is on the only limit. Uh, if you, it's a bit different when you work for a client and they can, you know, wait a bit longer. But if it's a competition and you have to send it, uh, that's it. Uh, but yeah, as, as you as you mentioned, Pavel, it's um, really important to be flexible as you work. It's interesting that clients are more flexible than competition. Not always, <laughs> because, because well, clients pay, pay you money, but then you can always postpone the client's work. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, it's uh, um, yeah. Every every book is different, and every every occasion is different. Um, competitions, it's a, I think it's um, it's an occasion that you can experiment with a lot of things. Uh, when you work with someone specifically, you have a lot of limitations because they, you know, they might have said, "I don't want this color," or "I want this color," or "I want the," you know, they, you have some kind of limitations already to start with, which helps you sometimes in the design process. Uh, when you work for yourself and you make a book just for the competition, all the all the scenarios are open. You can do whatever you like, and then you can get lost in that. And but um, also mistakes happen in the in the process, and uh, you can say it depends on the occasion. You might be able to restart. Uh, uh, sometimes not. So you have to just work with it. And if it's a design, and you you made a, something wrong, like a line. You just have to go with it and, you know, make it part of the design. Uh, like the graphite uh, it's decoration had some uh, blemishes that I just, you know, I, I went with the tool on top and I did some lines to cover them. Uh, I mean, that's, that's normal. <laughs> and uh, your, ne your next uh, book that you're working on, will it have a strict timeline? What uh, what guess, competition are you? I guess, uh, I, guess I guess this for? question this this question we will reserve for for the uh, yeah. for our next talk because we are already out of time and uh, we really need to finish this video and uh, and the lost Pavel for a moment <laughs> uh, at least Pavel's no, video. Yeah, no, um, no worries at all. I, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm happy. Uh, you know, anytime you want, we yeah. can discuss again yeah. more about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Andreas, for this uh, talk. It was interesting to see uh, uh, your creative process and uh, to talk about your binding and uh, your ideas. And I, I am looking forward to our next talk <laughs> and uh, other discussions. Uh, and uh, as usual, many thanks to our viewers, our community. A special thanks to our patrons on Patreon. Please check the link down below if you want to support us with your money. Your money helps us to edit these videos and to cover the expenses on editing. So it's very important to us. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. See ya. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's great.